a phytohormone that is involved with the cell division in the plant cell. What's that? It's cytokinin. So today I have come up with a phytohormone that is cytokinin where we are going to learn about its biosynthetic pathway, transport, regulation, functional profile as well as the signaling casket. So let's move on to the topic and understand all these details about cytokinin phytohormone. So coming to the introduction of cytokinin phytohormone. So this cytokinin is basic in nature. This is basic in nature which are the derivatives of amino purine or phenyl urea. So what is purine? Purine is a nucleotide base. So these are amino purine or phenyl urea which promotes the process of cytokinesis in the plant cell and that's why they are called as cytokinin means SR molecule that promotes the process of cytokinesis or simply you can say cell division. What's the first cytokinin that was discovered? It was kinetin which is also known as 6 perfural amino purine. Now this is one of the important question for exam where examiners may be asking about what's the first cytokinin that was discovered. So it was kinetin which is the synthetic hormone. Now what's the natural cytokinin? So it was zeatin which was isolated from maize which is known as zea maize and hence the compound is called as zeatin. It was isolated from unripe maize which is also present in coconut milk. So again an important question name the phytohormone that is present in coconut milk it's zeatin. So this kinetin it is present in the coconut milk. So this statement is for kinetin. Now what's the natural cytokinin in plants? It is zeatin because it was isolated from unripe zea maize that is maize. That's why it is called as zeatin. Now let's come to the biosynthetic pathway or let's see the cytokinin biosynthesis in plant. So they are derived from adenine nucleotide that is a purine nucleotide. What's the pathway for the synthesis? It's isoprenoid pathway was the most abundant cytokinin in plants that is zeatin that is isolated from zea maize. Was the location of this synthesis? It's plastid. So let's see the biosynthetic mechanism. Now what's the biosynthetic pathway? The pathway starts with the ATP molecule or ADP that binds to the 5 carbon molecule that is DMAPP that stands for dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. It is then converted to IPRTP or IPRDP. If ATP is combining to this 5 carbon compound that is DAM, so it will form IPRTP. And if ADP is com combined to this DAM, it will form IPRDP, which undergoes a series of reaction in the presence of cytochrome P450 monooxygenase, which is also called as CYP735A. It will result into the formation of ZTP or ZTP means zeatin triphosphate or zeatin diphosphate which undergoes a hydroxylation reaction in the presence of enzyme hydroxylase and will result into the formation of zeatin. And this is how a natural cytokinin zeatin it is found in plants that is maize which is also called as zea maize and that's why the compound is called as zeatin. Now let's see the transport mechanism of this cytokinin phytohormone. So it is mainly synthesized in the root. So if you see the biosynthetic mechanism, it is synthesizing in the root. But where it is taking place, it is taking place in plastid. So from root, it is transported acropetally to the plant. Now what is this acropetal transport? Acro means towards the tip. So this phytohormone, it is synthesized in root and from here it is uh, translocated to the shoot. That means the tip part of the plant that is what called as acropetal transport. So who will transport this cytokinin? It is done with the help of xylem because we all know that xylem is involved in the transport of water and nutrients from root to shoot. So along with it cytokinin phytohormone will be transported to the different parts of the plants. So now let's see the regulation mechanism of this phytohormone. So if cytokinin is synthesized in higher amount in the plants, so how it is regulated? There are two mechanisms by which it is regulated inside the plant cell. 
So it is firstly inactivated by cytokinin glycosylation. So what happens when the cytokinin is synthesized? But if it is in more amount, to this some sugar residues will be added. That means glycosylation reaction is happening. That is causing the inactivation of this phytohormone. Second is cleavage. So some cytokinin oxidases will be activated that will cause the cleavage of this phytohormone. And what's the name of the cytokinin oxidases? They are ATCKX1 whereas ATCKX2. So there are two oxidases that causes the cleavage of this cytokinin and thereby maintaining its optimal level inside the plant cell. So now let's see the signaling mechanism. What is actually happening when the cytokinin is synthesized in the plant cell? So the pathway starts with the ligand that is cytokinin itself as well as the what's the name of the receptor? It's CREV1 that is cytokinin response 1 that is a transmembrane protein or you can see two other name of the receptor that is AKH2 as well as AKH3. What is the signaling pathway? The signaling pathway is the two component phosphorylase system which is very important as you can get question from this statement was the signaling pathway that is involved for cytokinin phytohormone. So it is derived from the bacterial two component regulatory system. So what's the play players involved that is histidine sensor kinase as well as the HPT protein which is also called as histidine phosphotransfer protein. So what's the two component phosphorylase system? So there are two component is in this. Firstly is the sensor kinase domain and the other one is the receiver domain and the other is the receiver domain that is attached to the output domain and this sensor kinase is attached to input domain. So what is the name? It's receiver domain. So what happens once the cytokinin is synthesized in the plant cell? It is received by the input domain. Once this is received, it will cause the activation of the sensor kinase domain and this sensor kinase domain has a conserved cis-histidine amino acid. So here histidine amino acid is there and what's the peculiarity of the sensor kinase domain? It will cause the autophosphorylation reaction and will autophosphorylate it. At some point of time, this phosphate group is transferred to the receiver domain. Hence, it is called as the receiver because it is receiving phosphate group from the sensor kinase domain. And where this phosphate group is transferred, it is transferred to the aspartic acid residue of the receiver domain. So it is transferring from histidine amino acid of the sensor kinase domain to the aspartic acid that is D residues of the receiver domain. And that's what it is showing the output. So this is what the bacterial two component signaling system where two sensor kinase as well as receiver domain is involved in the pathway. So now what happens in the cytokinin signaling? So let's see that. So this cytokinin signaling, it starts with the receptor that is what called as CRE1. So this receptor is in the form of dimer, but they are inactive dimer. So what happened? This CRE1 receptor has an extracellular domain that is what called as chase domain. These domain are called as chase domain. And to these domain only cytokinins will interact and bind. So suppose this is cytokinin that is binding to the chase domain. This will cause the activation of the receptor that is CRE1. Now this CRE1 cytoplasmic receptor has a site that is what called as histidine kinase domain as well as the receiver domain as we have seen in case of the two component signaling system. So it has histidine kinase domain as well as receiver domain. So once this receptor is activated, this will cause the activation of the kinase domain of the receptor. So this kinase domain is activated and it is phosphorylated. Once this is phosphorylated, it will cause the transfer of this phosphate group from the histidine kinase residue to the receptor domain. And what is the receiver domain here? Is the aspartate amino acid. So now this is activated. Once this receptor is fully activated, it will cause the activation of the separate protein that is what called as HPT, that is histidine phosphotransfer protein. To this, the phosphate group is added. 
because this is the receiver domain means it is attached to the output domain so what's the output here it will cause the activation of one separate protein that is what called as histidine phosphotransfer protein that again has a conserved histidine domain now this is activated it will translocate inside the nucleus this hpt will translocate inside the nucleus because this is now phosphorylated this will activate another set of response regulator that is what called as type A ARR. So ARR stands for response regulator. So type A ARR will be activated. Why? Because this HPT protein will send a phosphate group to this type A. So to this phosphate group is sent on the aspartate residue. This will again activate another type of response regulator that is type B. So here occurs the activation of type B ARR that is having the histidine residue. Again here the phosphorylation will happen and ultimately it will result into the transcription of the genes that will cause the activation of cytokinin signaling and cytokinin induced gene expression will be seen inside the plant cell. So what is this? It will encode some kind of transcription factor that is involved in the gene expression. So this is how cytokine signaling is seen inside the plant cell. So let's see an overview of the signaling again. So what happens? The receptor is present in the plasma membrane. What's the name of this receptor? It's Q1. That has a chase domain to which the cytokinin bind. So how the signaling is on? Once the cytokinin ligand will bind to its receptor, so this chase domain is now interacting with the ligand that is cytokinin will help in the activation of the receptor. Now the cytoplasmic of part of the receptor has histidine kinase domain as well as the receiver domain. So the ligand binding domain is the chase domain which causes the activation of the receptor histidine kinase domain. Now this kinase domain is activated means it will add phosphate group. But this happens with the help of autophosphorylation phenomena. So the phosphate group is added to this histidine kinase domain which will further cause the activation of its receiver domain. And now the receiver domain is also activated because one phosphate group is added here. Now once this receptor is fully activated, it will cause the activation of one separate protein in the cytosol. What's the name of that protein? It's HPT, that is histidine phosphotransfer protein. And to this, a phosphate group is now added. Once this protein is added, it will translocate from cytosol inside the nucleus. So it will enter inside the nucleus where it will phosphorylate or activate another type of response regulator. Now, what's the name of that response regulator? It's type A, ARR. So, it will transfer its phosphate group to the aspartate residue of type A, ARR. So, now this is activated. Type A is now activated, which will again cause the activation of another response regulator that is type B, ARR. So, again, this phosphate group is transferred to the histidine residue of this type B, ARR which will cause the transcription of the genes that are involved in the cytokinin induced function in the plant cell. And this is how cytokine signaling is seen in the plants. So here, totally the mechanism is based on phosphorylation of the residue. Firstly, histidine kinases are phosphorylated on histidine residue that will transfer a phosphate group on the aspartate residues of the transmitter domain or you can say the receiver domain. And this is how it's happening the phosphorylation mechanism of response regulator that will ultimately cause the transcription of cytokinin induced gene responses inside the plant cell. Now let's see the functional profile of the cytokinin phytohormone. So first function it, it helps in the morphogenesis process. So morphogenesis means outer development. So if high concentration of cytokinin is there in the plant, so it promotes short development if low cytokinin concentration is there, it promotes root development. If auxin and cytokinin concentration is equal in the plant cell, then it promotes the formation of callus. Now, what is callus? 
Callus is the undifferentiated mass of cells. So if high cytokinin is there, it promotes shoot development. And if low cytokinin, then it promotes root development. Now you may get a question from here. That is auxin to cytokinin ratio if it is high. So you know that cytokinin promotes shoot development. But here it is in low concentration. That means if high auxin is there, it promotes the development of root. And controversial if cytokinin ratio is high, then to auxin, it promotes the formation of shoot. But if both are equal phytohormone, that is auxin as well as cytokinin, that means there will be a callus development. It also helps in the formation of xylem, that means the vascular tissue development. And the third function is shoot apical meristem rescue. So we all know that this cytokinin helps in the formation of plant cells. That means it promotes the process of cell division in the plant. That means it does it the cytokinesis part in plant. That means it promotes the formation of stem meristem. So more cell number will be there. It will form stem meristem. It causes the leaf primordia to grow. That means it is rescuing shoot apical meristem. It also helps in the process of lateral growth formation. So we all know that apical dominance is the main function of the phytohormone that is auxin. So what happens in apical dominance? Only the central part of the stem growth that is inhibiting lateral growth of the plant. But here if cytokine is in more in the plant, so it inhibits the axillary bud formation and it promotes the formation of lateral buds that means we can say it is antagonist to apical dominance in plants because it is promoting the sideways growth of the plant that is the lateral bud. It also helps in the formation of ground gall. So when the agrobacterium tumefaciens infects the plant it helps in the formation of tumor. So this agrobacterium tumefaciens helps in the process of crown gall formation. So this cytokinin helps agrobacterium tumefaciens to complete this process. It also helps to delay the leaf senescence in plant. Now what is this leaf senescence? Leaf senescence is a programmed aging of the plant cells. So if we apply cytokinin to the part where aging is taking place in leaf, so it will enhance cell division and it will delay the process of this leaf senescence. It also helps in the functional female gametophyte development that is the megaspore development during fertilization and also responsible for the formation of nodule development where the symbiotic association takes place in plants like you have studied about rhizobium that does the nitrogen fixation in leguminous plants such as pea, bean, alfalfa, etc. So all these are the functions of cytokinin. So this is all about the cytokinin phytohormone where we have seen the biosynthetic mechanisms. How they are derived? They are derived from purine nucleotide. They are derived from isoprenoid pathway that is taking place in plastid which requires a 5 carbon precursor that is DMAP. And how it is transported? It is transported with the help of xylem that is acropetal transport and we have also seen its function. It's regulation that is regulated by two mechanisms that is inactivation as well as cleavage by its specific oxidases and also the signaling mechanism. So thank you everyone for watching the session. I hope you like the session. If you like the session, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel that is Biotechnica. So meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye, take care. Wish you all the best for the exam. Keep learning.